Hello everybody and welcome to Cast and Blast. On today's episode, it's going to involve a little bit of minor parental supervision due to we're making extreme pipe jigs, extreme deep water halibut lingcod. It's going to involve fire, molten lead, and a slight amount of danger. And uh, this is old school technology. We're going deep, deep, deep down to the bottom, like 450, 500, 800 feet deep, jigging for monster fish. We're talking big lead. We're talking lead, five pounds, three, four, five pounders, massive hooks on them, getting hooked up, going down for the big ones. Well, you heard them. Today we're making DIY lead pipe jigs for an upcoming halibut and lingcod trip. So what we're using to heat our lead up is this Bayou back burner that we usually use to cook crabs, but today we're cooking lead in a cast iron pot. Bark it up, Holmes. Ooh. Like it. Let's get our pot in there, take off our safety gloves. I think I might put this thing in there. I don't think I'm ever gonna use a 20 pound lead ball like this. Melt this thing down right here. Put in the big banana. Ugh. Look at that thing. This thing is massive. So now all we gotta do is wait. This, with the amount of lead we got in that pot, it's gonna take quite a while for it to melt down. So as you can see, the lead is starting to melt in our pot and we're gonna get our copper tube and cut it in half. This is what the outside of our pipe jig is gonna be. And we're gonna pour the lead inside. Our skills is more than made up for with our carelessness with molten metal. to get somewhere not, not terrible it'll work for our purposes so we had to crimp shut one side of the copper pipe so we could fill it with lead and we would drill a hole in it later to attach it to our line <laughs> skimming off all the impurities that float to the top in our slag so that we can just have clean lead, pretty clean lead underneath. It's gonna give it a little lay ladle. Clean lead, watch out, stay back. We're gonna let that solidify so it doesn't make any air bubbles. Well, so it doesn't keep running out the bottom. We don't want to keep running out the bottom, and it's not. It's not running out the bottom, so we hit it with another ladle full right now. Oops. We don't want to fill it all the way to the top because uh, we're going to pound the top end flat just like we did the bottom. So we want to leave about an inch from the top. It's probably good enough, for sure. So it's been a couple days since we've poured our lead and now all that we have left to do is we have to crimp the other side shut and drill a hole in it for the eye so we can connect our line to it and drill the holes for our hooks. So we're gonna get to that. So now, I'm gonna get this thing crimped shut. So one of the problems we had is we overfilled the copper pipe a little bit. So when we tried to crimp the other end shut, the lead got in the way. I would leave probably a minimum of two extra inches on the end when you fill it up with lead so it's easier to crimp shut. There we go. 
ain't pretty you'll probably end up being the bottom because we filled these with a little bit too much lead so we don't have as much space to crimp these so now that we have it flattened out and crimped shut i'm gonna file this other side the reason why we're filing them is for when we're jigging we just don't have any sharp edges to come back and cut our line there we go that's pretty good that's filed down enough it's dull so now that I got the pipe crimp shut, I'm going to use a center punch to make some starting dents so it's easier for me to drill. I'm going to put one at the top pretty close to the edge. And this is going to be the hole that's going to go to my rod. I'm going to put it about there. And this top one is where my first hook is going to be. My second hook is going to be a bit lower. And there we go. I got all three holes center punched. I'm ready to drill out. So we got our two holes. I messed up actually quite a bit and this one's pretty off, but I got my two holes drilled for my hooks. And we're done. So we have some of these cotter pins that I'm gonna put through the holes that we drilled and this is what our hooks are gonna connect to. So I'm gonna bend these cotter pins out. that and then i'm gonna get this giant split ring and put it through here and that out enough and close this back up so now when i put it through there we already got our snap ring on and i'm gonna put the hooks on the snap rings yep there we go There we go. Now I just gotta get these through the pipe jig. I'm gonna put this one on the top. That, we stick out. And put this one going the opposite direction through the bottom. So we have one hook facing out to the left and our bottom hook facing out to the right. Now I just gotta get these cut down to size and wrapped around the pipe. I got the hammer and flat moves. Now I just got to do the same to the bottom one. And there we have it. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put some electrical tape on the back of these so my line doesn't get behind here when I'm jigging. But pretty good i mean i need to hammer that down just a little bit more to get that flat but so far we're rocking now gotta get my hooks onto these snap rings and i'm almost done One. And there we go. Now all that's really left to do is I just got to electrical tape the back of the pin so my line doesn't get behind there and we're done.
And that is the pipe jig complete. And there it is. 100% done and ready to go out there and catch some halibut and lingcod. So this was quite a bit different from what I usually upload because, well, I'm not fishing, but might as well film something interesting like building pipe jigs. So I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really had a lot of fun filming this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. So catch you guys on the next one.